So all of you would be familiar with facing a baby with tension pneumothorax. It's a very scary situation. And uh, cold light, as you can see here, it transilluminates the whole of the chest. Uh, remember that the room needs to be fully darkened. And in a very premature baby, it may not be as reliable because both sides may appear to be translucent. However, if you have mediastinal shift, the heart sounds are shifted, the baby is uh, suddenly worsening, you would need to consider uh, tension pneumothorax. And needling while waiting for the x-ray can be appropriate in a resuscitation scenario if the baby has suddenly collapsed. And uh, obviously, this is a typical x-ray that you might get. The mediastinum is fully shifted, the uh, lung is collapsed, and uh, there is significant clinical deterioration. So, uh, needle thoracocentesis is something that any pediatrician who looks after babies, not only a neonatologist, should be familiar with because it's a life-saving scenario, especially in a resuscitation uh, environment, in the labor room even. Uh, some of us might have used uh, scalp vein sets. Uh, you can use a scalp vein needle if you don't have access to the appropriate sized venflon. But uh, please don't leave the scalp and needle in after the air is drained. The advantage of the cannulas or venflons is that because the needle will be removed, it's only the soft cannula that's staying in the chest. Uh, there is no risk of lung tear if the needle stays in after the pneumothorax is drained. So please uh, keep in mind that if your team is using a scalp vein set, Make sure everyone understands that you shouldn't leave the needle in after the air is drained. You have to pull it out at the same time. Uh, we have uh, different sizes. So you have the 22 gauge, which is a blue venflon, the 20 gauge, the pink one, and the 18 gauge, the green one. According to the size of the baby and the extent to which the pneumothorax is significant, you can use any of these. We have these uh, stopcock uh, connectors, connectors which have a stopcock at the end, which will be very helpful to drain. So uh, this will connect to the venflon uh, after you remove the needle out and uh, the stopcock will help you drain the air out. So uh, you don't need underwater seal because the moment you put the needle in uh, the air gushes out and by the time uh, you can secure the three-way tap and aspirate with a syringe. So uh, anatomically we can either use the uh, mid-clavicular line uh, in the second intercostal space or the mid axillary line in the anterior in, uh, sorry anterior uh, axillary line in the fourth intercostal space normally for the chest drain we say mid mid axillary line but for the needling it's better to go in the anterior axillary line uh, remember to extend the uh, uh, arm upwards uh, so it's out of the field you clean the area quickly uh, alcohol swab should be enough for needling uh, wear gloves and um, make sure that you are entering the chest. As soon as the venflon goes in, uh, you remove the needle out, the, keep the cannula and connect it through the three-way adapter. Uh, remember that the stopcock uh, direction you can indicate which side is open and accordingly uh, you withdraw the air. You can keep it in uh, to, till we repeat the x-ray. You can use a steri strip or a micropore to fix the cannula and uh, keep it straight when you fix it don't bend it down because the sh cannula will obstruct and once the uh, x-ray is done if the air leak has drained you can remove it if uh, the air leak isn't drained and it's reaccumulating, you can try aspirating once or twice but if it keeps accumulating especially if the baby is on mechanical ventilator you will need a chest drain mention this to the family as well and get their consent for the chest drain at the same time so uh, this is using a butterfly needle and uh, obviously uh, the way it is connected, it's similar, but uh, once the air is aspirated, you have to remove the needle out. Uh, 